six warships and four aircraft from the Philippines, Australia, Japan, and the United States conducted a joint patrol in the South China Sea on Sunday following Chinese harassment of Philippine Navy resupply missions in the region. The Armed Forces of the Philippines United States Indo-Pacific Command Australian Defense Force and Japan's Self-Defense Forces successfully conducted the first multilateral maritime cooperative activity in the West Philippine Sea on Sunday, using Manila's official designation for sections of the South China Sea. The latest maritime joint patrol not only marks the first combined multinational patrol but also the first time Japanese vessels and aircraft participated. Tokyo and Manila have expanded their defense ties over the last year, most notably through trilateral exchanges with the U.S. and the provision of naval radars to the Philippine Navy via Japan's new military aid program. The drills, which included the Maritime Self-Defense Forces Akabono Destroyer, included a communication exercise, division tactics and a photo exercise. These activities were designed to enhance the different FOSS's abilities to work together effectively in maritime scenarios, the statement added. Alongside the number of involved nations, the Joint Patrol also included the most assets to date. Warships included literal combat ship USS Mobile, LCS-26. HMAS Waramunga, FFH-152. JS Akabono. DD-108 BRP Gregorio del Pilar, PS-15 BRP Antonio Luna, FF-151 and BRP Valentin Diaz, PS-177 Shipborne helicopters as well as two P-8 Poseidon aircraft from Australia and the US were also involved. In a joint statement released by defense officials from the four nations, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin stated that this patrol underscores their shared commitment to ensuring that all countries are free to fly, sail, and operate wherever international law allows. Similar sentiments were communicated by his Australian, Japanese, and Philippine counterparts, with Philippine Secretary of National Defense Gilberto Teodoro emphasizing that these actions show the enduring friendship and partnership among the peace-loving peoples of the Philippines, United States, Australia, and Japan. Japan believes that the issue concerning the South China Sea is directly related to the peace and stability of the region and is a legitimate concern of the international community, including Japan, Australia, the Philippines and the United States, Japanese Defense Minister Minoru Kahara said in Saturday's statement. Japan opposes any unilateral changes to the status quo by force, such attempts as well as any actions that increase tensions in the South China Sea. Japan which deployed the Murasama-class destroyer J.S. Akabono to the Quad Naval Exercises, said the maritime cooperative activity aims to enhance regional maritime security cooperation among the four countries, and promote freedom of navigation towards the realization of a free and open Indo-Pacific. Philippine Defense Chief Gilberto Teodoro said the exercises would be a step toward enhancing the country's capacity for individual and collective self-defense, and would be part of activities highlighting the enduring friendship and partnership between the four nations. The Armed Forces of the Philippines AFP, hosted on Saturday a pre-sale conference for the Quad Naval Drills, also known as the Inaugural Maritime Cooperative Activity MCA. Key planning members from the AFP, Australian Defense Force, Japan Self-Defense Force, and United States Indo-Pacific Command, convened at the Western Command Headquarters in Puerto Princesa to finalize plans for the activity. The MCA underscores the commitment to uphold international law while promoting peace and stability in the region. The AFP said the MCA, conducted by naval, maritime and air force units in the Philippine Exclusive Economic Zone (EEZ) prioritizes adherence to international and domestic laws, ensuring the safety of navigation and respect for the rights and interests of all states involved. It would also demonstrate the highest standards of professionalism and cooperation among participating forces. Meanwhile, the Chinese military said Sunday that its Southern Theater Command had organized its own drills in the South China Sea conducting a joint maritime and aerial combat patrol in an unspecified area of the waterway. All military activities that disturb the stability of the South China Sea are under control, 
a statement posted to the Chinese Defense Ministry website, in an apparent jab at the quadrilateral exercises. China has conducted a massive land reclamation project to essentially build and militarize a number of islands in the waters, despite protests from other claimants, as well as the United States and Japan. The US and its allies fear that the Chinese held outposts, some of which boast military-grade airfields and advanced weaponry, could be used to restrict free movement in the area. The Asian powerhouse has hardened its position on the waterway in the years following a landmark July 2016 ruling by the Permanent Court of Arbitration in The Hague that invalidated most of its claims there, pursuing a more aggressive stance in the waters that employs naval, coast guard and so-called maritime militia ships. Tensions between Manila and Beijing have soared in recent months in the South China Sea, in particular near the Second Thomas Shoal. The shoal is home to a Philippine military outpost, and the waters nearby have seen clashes between the two sides, including several collisions and the use of powerful water cannons by the China Coast Guard, that have threatened to escalate into a larger crisis, including one that could draw in the US, Manila's defense treaty ally. The Philippines has accused China of repeatedly obstructing resupply missions for the BRP Sierra Madre, a Philippine Navy transport ship that was intentionally grounded off the disputed Second Thomas Shoal, known as Rene Zhao in China. Beijing says the Philippine vessels entered its territory illegally. Beijing and Manila have increasingly clashed over their competing claims to the South China Sea. Beijing claims a majority of the strategic waterway, which it delineates with a nine-dash line. The Philippines, Japan, and the U.S. are expected to strengthen their security cooperation during this week's trilateral summit in Washington. Sunday's dueling exercises came days ahead of a state visit to Washington by Prime Minister Fumio Kishida for a meeting with U.S. President Joe Biden, followed by the first-ever trilateral summit with the two leaders and the President of the Philippines. At that summit, the three leaders will discuss expanding trilateral cooperation in a number of areas, including in the defense arena, with the trio aiming to build up what Washington calls a collective capacity in the region that also reduces redundancies and improves security coordination. According to Chinese think tank, there is no immediate risk of war between China and the Philippines in the South China Sea despite repeated clashes in recent months. This is because the Philippines cannot beat China on its own and the U.S. is not interested in getting directly involved in any such conflict, the South China Sea Strategic Situation Probing Initiative SCSPI, said. The United States hopes to use the Philippines' geographical location to contain China, but it does not want to be unnecessarily involved in an armed conflict with China because of the Philippines' agenda, the Beijing-based think tank said in its latest annual report. SCSPI director Hu Bo said while the Philippines appeared to be turning into a proxy for U.S. interests aimed at countering Beijing, there was no possibility of a proxy war, given that rival South China Sea claimants including Manila would not be able to win if the U.S. did not get involved. The United States does not want to fight, and the Philippines and Vietnam do not dare to fight. The latest encounter took place last week, in the second such standoff this month, with Manila saying water cannons fired by the Chinese Coast Guard at a supply ship off the Second Thomas Shoal had damaged the vessel and injured its crew. The Philippine-controlled shoal is part of the Spratly Islands chain claimed by both countries and called Nansha in Chinese. The repeated standoffs have raised concerns over the likelihood of a conflict, with the United States getting involved to defend its treaty ally, the Philippines. The U.S. has repeatedly expressed support for the Philippines on the matter, and condemned the Chinese action as dangerous and reckless. Beijing said it carried out control, obstruction and eviction in accordance with law, while also warning the U.S. not to intervene. The U.S. has also emphasized that it would be treaty-bound to defend the Philippines if its military, ships or aircraft were to come under armed attack. Despite Washington's diplomatic support for Manila, and the deployment of P-8s and other types of unmanned reconnaissance aircraft to provide real-time intelligence support, there was no sign that it would directly assist Philippine resupply missions to the Second Thomas Shoal. U.S. actions so far had been restrained and its top priority was to deter China, rather than start a war, adding that both countries wanted their ties to stabilize. The SCSPI annual report studies U.S. military activities in the region. According to Friday's edition, 
The frequency of U.S. Navy aircraft carrier strike group activities in the South China Sea last year was the same as in 2022, but their duration had increased significantly. U.S. warships also made fewer Taiwan Strait transits last year, the report said, though aerial transits had increased. It also said Washington had increased the hype around its operations and stepped up efforts to use its regional allies to pressure Beijing. According to the report released by Beijing Think Tank, in the foreseeable future, there should be no armed conflict in the South China Sea. China cannot afford to war against the United States with their allies, including Japan, Australia, and the Philippines. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. believes in doing more to assert Manila's claim in the West Philippine Sea but insists his government's approach is not equivalent to provoking communist China. In an interview, Marcos said the Philippines is exerting maximum effort to avoid a war with China. President Joe Biden has warned China not to engage in dangerous and unlawful activity towards the Philippines and warned that any attack on the U.S. ally would trigger Washington's mutual defense treaty with Manila. Speaking alongside Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese, Biden said he wanted to send a clear message to Beijing after China's Coast Guard tried to block a Filipino supply mission in the South China Sea. I want to be very clear. The United States defense commitment to the Philippines is ironclad. Any attack on the Filipino aircraft vessels or armed forces will invoke a mut our mutual defense treaty with the Philippines. The comments come days after two collisions between Filipino and Chinese vessels in the contested waters. While putting China on notice, Biden stressed that he was not looking for conflict with the country as he welcomed Albanese for a visit aimed at bolstering an alliance that is critical to countering Beijing in the Indo-Pacific. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Mao Ning said the U.S. had no right to get involved in a problem between China and the Philippines. The U.S. is not party to the South China Sea issue. It has no right to get involved in a problem between China and the Philippines. The U.S. promise of defending the Philippines must not hurt China's sovereignty and maritime interests in the South China Sea. And it must also not enable and encourage the illegal claims of the Philippines. The Philippines is an important strategic ally of the U.S. as it borders two potential flashpoints in the Pacific, the South China Sea and Taiwan. Beyond the U.S., the Philippines and Japan recently agreed to deepen defense ties, with Japanese troops securing greater access to Philippine territory for training and logistics. Moreover, the Philippines is pursuing greater maritime cooperation with the United Kingdom. So, the Philippines is gradually becoming a key hub of military cooperation among Southeast Asia's democracies. This affords the U.S. important strategic benefits, for which China has only itself to blame. Beijing has been unmoved by the close to 100 diplomatic protests filed by Manila and continues to build up its flotilla of military and fishing vessels in the West Philippine Sea. Military experts agree that jointly patrolling the tension-roiled waters could be an effective deterrent against Chinese intimidation and harassment. Stability in the region is seen as being increasingly threatened by confrontations between Chinese Coast Guard and maritime militia units and Philippine vessels around disputed features in the South China Sea. From territorial defense to countering transnational crimes, the Philippines' maritime training activity with allies will help to face an array of common threats in the region.